out here on my cousin's ranch out here in Eden with Father Mitch Pacwa. We're going to about to try to go kill something. I don't know, what are we looking for today? Probably a cross. Cross? What's he? Who do you get cross with? This is going to be fun. same doctrine of what the Eucharist is. And until somebody professes that faith, that and it's the same faith, we can't share communion. Okay. You know, for instance, in Church of Christ, uh, you don't have a minister who would be called a priest and he would not be offering a sacrifice. Yes. Right? And that is the nature of what we do. And until your conscience, you know, that, that you make an act of faith, that you understand and agree with what we do, even if, even if it's a rudimentary uh, faith, uh, the, like a kid gets, um, and a willingness to live that faith, it, it would be a violation of your conscience and ours to receive something that you don't accept as, as true. And that, that's why I use the analogy of not you know, being able to vote in Canada or the here uh, because you don't have that same commitment of conscience to the country. And it's more okay. So it's a, it's a matter. It's a matter of an act of faith. You
the, what, the one that turned me out of the Democrat Party was Jesse Jackson. But he ran for president in 84. Mm. And he ran as a pro-life Democrat for two months. Mm. And then they said, boy, you're doing off the plantation. Mm. You know, they, they wouldn't let... And he had to become... And, and here was his argument, by the way. He said, my mother was going to abort me. And it was my grandmother and the preacher that talked her out of doing that. I have to be pro-life. My life depended on it. And then he went pro-abortion. I said, that's it. If someone whose own life depended on it, I can't vote for these people. See, I was telling them in the 1888 election, the Republicans ran on the no Rome and no Romanism it was an explicitly anti-Catholic platform. And so the Catholics joined the, the Democrats. The Republicans don't want us here. They don't want us in the party. And so they went to the Democrats. And when you think how many Catholics came up north to the big cities that were all in the unions, and the Democrats, you know, helped the unions. So they, they, you know, felt that these guys take care of us. But the days of the Democrats taking care of the working class is gone. But that's the... They don't care. That's one of my arguments. It's not the... And I have a cousin that is a... I mean, I mean, just the biggest liberal you've ever met. Yeah. But his... Which was my great aunt and uncle. They were Democrats. Mm -hmm. It's not the same... As it was back then. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's a totally different platform. Totally different. It's, this is, the Democrat Party is, uh, I always put it this way, there's two sets of billionaires behind each party. Mm -hmm. Democrats have the money market and banking people. That's their mainstay, along with high tech. But the high-tech developers, not producers, the high-tech people all send their production out of the country. The two Republicans have as their billionaire supporters people in production and energy. And the when you think about Democrats as being money market. They've got a fixed amount of money, and their whole mentality is divide up the pie. I, I'm smart, so I get a bigger piece, but <laughs> divide up the pie so everybody gets at least a little piece of the pie. And Republicans are, let's make more pie. Mm -hmm. Democrats, you can't make more pie, you're going to ruin the economy, or the environment, I should say. You know, that's their argument. And it's two world views. And people are living off of the gas fumes of the days when they used to help the working class. Yep. Not anymore. They're out to destroy the working class. Mm -hmm. And and to keep the poor on a short tether until they can convince them to abort more of their children. Because they don't like people of other groups. And then all this stuff about dividing into groups is the same thing Democrats have done since the beginning. You know, you don't, when you're involved in, you know, especially up north, where it's, you know, working class versus owners and stuff, and union workers versus management, you, you see it the world in that way.
live in this country with the Indians that take them out. It's this divide into groups, pick a group that you like, and that's your deal. Hmm. And that mentality is still going on. this you know uh, on you can feel that there's a relic in there feel it oh okay anti what wow. anti mincian anti mincian it's a e eastern right thing you can see from the use of old church slavonic but the cool thing about this relic is that Whoa. it bled what whoa like it wasn't didn't have blood before no whoa that's yeah. something. That that's no, something. I, what I don't <laughs> what I don't know is who the martyr was. Wow. That I don't know. Okay, so we've had an amazing day with Father Mitch out here on my cousin's ranch out here in Eden, Texas. And we had mass out in the open. Uh, we got Father Mitch got a red stag first thing this morning. And I went out to eat, had a great visit with him. And uh, now we're heading to do some little varmint hunting. Hopefully we'll see fox, maybe a coyote, who knows. Uh, so we're heading out there right now to complete this first day uh, hunting with Father Mitch. We'll see how it turns out.
So we had a great morning with Father. All the family showed up. We were going to have mass with Father Mitch out here on the ranch. Leo, is it good? Cheese. <laughs> <laughs>